So the next thing that you really want to work on in order to advance a little bit of your skill level is learning how to go from your regular jump backs into crow jump backs. So if you have your push-ups, if you have the pike push-ups, if you can jump back accordion style, and maybe you're even working a little bit on jumping back lever style, the next thing is crow. Crow is a really good place to work on your jump back because you are not able to use your feet. Your feet are off the floor, so you can't actually jump. All that you have is really the relationship between your shoulders and your hips. So it's a really interesting place to work on it. And the first way that you would do it is again with the accordion style jump, where your head moves forward, your feet move backwards, and your hips drop in the middle last. So it looks like this. do a couple of those. One of the things that you can note is getting into crow. So if you're in a squat position, you'll feel all the weight in your feet. So when your weight is in your feet, in order to balance into crow, you actually don't pick your feet up off of the ground. You shift your weight. You shift your center of gravity into your hands. So when you're shifting your weight, it goes from your feet and it's almost like you're pouring that weight into your hands. Again, you don't have to pick up your feet. You just have to lean far enough forward until your feet come off of the ground. A lot of times people try and pick up their, their feet, bend their knee, try and get it up, and they actually haven't reached that point of balance. So that's one really good way to start working on crow is just shifting, shifting, shifting your weight slowly. And then once you feel comfortable with that, then you're gonna go and shift your weight one more time. So it's basically from your feet to your hands to beyond your hands. And that's when your head moves forward. So it looks like that accordion style jump back. One more time. One of the things that I think about when I'm jumping from crow backwards is I'm actually never thinking backwards. I'm always thinking forwards. I move forward, I look forward, I'm seeing forward, I'm feeling forward, I'm feeling the weight in my hands, and my legs and my feet are just becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. So again. Okay, once you feel pretty comfortable with that jump back, then you can work on the lever style. And the lever style is when you're really playing with tension between your hips and your shoulders. In order to get your legs lighter off your hands, in order to eventually be able to press into a handstand, or just get a little bit of lightness or strength or grace in the movement, you want to push your hip forward in order to make your legs lighter. As you push your hip forward, you have to feel that tension of your shoulder moving back under your hip. Looks like this. All right, so you can see that jump was a little bit lighter. I'm just gonna play with it a few times and see if I can get it even lighter than that. So just keep working with that tension between the hip and shoulder. One more time. Okay. Next progression would be 
if you're starting to get lighter in that jump and you want to eventually take your crow into handstand but you're just not able to get it yet one of the best ways that you can work on this is to do the exercise as close as possible without doing the exercise and what that means most of the time is if you can do the eccentric movement so next thing that we're going to work on is going from handstand down into crow <clears throat> Do this a couple times. One thing that you can think about when you're moving from handstand to crow is actually that you're really trying to hit like four, four positions or four movements. I'm actually going to show it from headstand once. So any headstand or forearm stand could be a way to build this skill. So the easiest thing would be to go into a regular headstand. This would be position number one. Position number two would be what I call a loose tuck, where you're bending your knees, but you're not pressing your thighs against your belly or your chest. Number three would be working on getting a tight tuck, where your thighs and your belly are pressed together. And then number four would be lowering down. Obviously a little bit claustrophobic in headstand, but it really helps you feel exactly what your legs and your hips are meant to do. So the next time that you run through that exercise, whether it's from handstand or tripod or forearm stand or handstand, is you can try and hit all four of those positions. If you can't get one, then you know what you need to work on. So let's try it again. all four. Next one, what we can try and do is once you've really mastered going from handstand to crow and you can kind of do it uh, pretty much without fail and you're working on doing it, I would say anywhere from 10 to 20 times and you're doing this on a pretty regular basis like daily, the next thing is that you can try to start taking your crow up to handstand. So basically it looks like this. Let's do it a couple more times, but basically what you can see is that I'm moving through my tuck. I'm not trying to kick or straighten my legs or use my feet to get me up there. I'm really focused on my shoulder and hip relationship, so I'm going to do it again. Shoulders back, hips forward. Once I'm balanced, then legs straight. Thank you. 